Hi, my name is Mr. Roshina. I'm professor of neurology at the Danish Eric Center, Riso Spitzel, Glostrom. My name is Sabrina Khan. I'm a medical doctor and a PhD student here at the Danish Headache Center. Today I'm here to present you new data derived from our MRI and geography study, specifically focusing on pain face during the migraine attacks. While the exact origin of migraine pain remains unknown, it has been suggested that the dura mater may play an important role. Preclinical studies have shown that the activation of the dural nociceptors, specifically around the vessels, may evoke pain. In this study, we wish to examine the activation of the dural nociceptors during the migraine attacks without aura. Since it is impossible to measure the direct activation of the dural nociceptors in humans, we need a surrogate marker. So in this study, we use the dilation of the dural arteries as the surrogate marker of the dural activation. To test our hypothesis, we performed high-resolution MR angiography at 3 Tesla in patients with unilateral migraine without aura. We measured the circumference change of cranial arteries using a software program that detects the luminal boundaries of a chosen vessel segment every 0.2 millimeters. The middle meningeal artery was of specific importance to us, as it is the main blood supply of the dura mater. We performed MR angiography at baseline, in the early onset phase of a migraine attack, after sumatriptan treatment, and finally 27 hours after migraine onset. And now moving on to the results. We found that at the onset phase of a migraine attack, the middle meningeal artery had a greater circumference on the pain side compared to the non-pain side. No other investigated artery exhibited any pain side specific changes in circumference. In those patients who received sumatriptan treatment, we found a constriction of all extracranial arteries, equally so on both sides of the head. We also performed an exploratory analysis of the MR angiography data from 27 hours after onset of migraine, and here we found that there was a sustained bilateral dilation of the middle meningeal artery. Now we heard about the results of this study, and the question is, what is the interpretation of this data? We propose that the unilateral dilation of the meningeal arteries, ipsilateral to the pain, may reflect the activation of the dural nociceptors around the vessels and explain migraine pain. Another interesting finding was the prolonged dilation 27 hours later after the migraine attack started. This late bilateral dilation may actually reflect the clinical observation that we have in many patients that pain may start unilaterally in the beginning of the migraine attack and become bilateral at the end of the migraine attack. And I think that that was the case in our study. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope that you found our data interesting. And we'd like to encourage you, of course, to read our paper.